Well, I started with um, playing by playing the clarinet starting in fifth grade. So I played the clarinet, had a few lessons, played in band all through high school. Um, I didn't start, I, and I haven't played it since high school, but I did um, start singing. I didn't start singing until I was in my, or at least publicly, until junior year of high school. Um, I'd been in like chorus, but never really done the whole public by yourself singing. Um, but I finally got up the nerve when I was a junior in high school to audition, mostly because I knew most of, my, most of the people who were going to do it. And it was um, Into the Woods. And I got a part. I got the one part I didn't want, though. Um, <laughs> she sang very, very high, uh, the, uh, Jack's mother. Uh, so I got to be the mother to a senior, which was a strange experience. Um, uh, but that was really fun. And, I, you know, I'd seen my father do it. So it was something that I wanted to do. And I thought, wow, that'd be really fun. But I didn't get up the nerve to do it until then. And then pretty much after that, you couldn't stop me. The next year, um, in my senior year, I did um, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And I was the narrator. And so, like, I got the spotlight. I got the all the things. And that was just really, really really fun. And I loved the combination of the singing. And well, I guess in high school, we didn't really add dancing. We just didn't have a choreographer. So we didn't do that. But then I now, um, as an adult, I get the chance to both sing and dance at the same time, which is a which is really hard and also rewarding and fun. Very, fun. it's really fun um, to be able to get through a whole song that you've sung and danced and you're like standing there in the spotlight and the po final poets like, <laughs> and then getting ready to sing again. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's invigorating on a couple different levels. For some reason, um, the way that I'm wired, I, I retain music. Um, I don't retain other important things sometimes that I wish I could, but I hear a song once or twice and I can just remember it. And little did I know that that would be a skill that I could utilize in my professional life when I grew up. Um, but yeah, so I grew up performing, singing. Um, when I was 16, I bought my first guitar. Uh, my parents bought it for me for my uh, birthday. My mom was a guitarist, and I always thought that was like the coolest thing, that she could just whip out a guitar and, and play a song. Um, and so she taught me my first chords, and then I was just kind of off. I decided to study anthropology with an emphasis in music and the music of the world um, when I went to the University of Colorado at Boulder. And that led me to do an exchange program studying drumming in Ghana. And so I lived in West Africa for a little while and was touring with these incredible musicians. And my entire direction of my life would change there um, because there were orphans that would um, come to the college campus and didn't seem to have um, much structure to their day other than just to play in the field and and be there and they were curious about these Americans that had come and um, a friend of mine uh, that was on the program with me Sarah Geller we kind of put our heads together and thought what can we do for these kids that would kind of use the privilege that we have which is kind of immense that we're here in this other country with these incredible artists and forebearers of the cultural tradition in Ghana. And how can we somehow create something for these kids? And so we started a nonprofit called Arts Education International and that created culturally relevant arts programs for kids who are orphaned and abandoned, or um, in, in the case of Sierra Leone, uh, civil wars. And we were able to hire artists from within their culture and create programs, educational programs for these kids. And it was there that I was starting to witness the transformation, and, and as we say in this program, the magic that, that music holds within it. Um, these kids would be like super tough and uh, like adults, like th the most adult, like 11 and 12 year olds you would ever meet. But when we would play music together, it would be as if that childlike nature came right back out of them and this fun and this joy. And I really wondered what, 
what is it? What is it neurologically? What is it somatically and in the body that makes this happen, that makes this occur? You know, there'll always be like this esoteric part of music that, that just does something magical for us. But also, you know, there must be something neurologic that we can research and study and harness um, in a way. So that led me to uh, Boston to study at the Berklee College of Music. And I found uh, the field of music therapy there and went through an intensive five-year program um, of learning exactly just those questions. What is it that music does to our brains, to our bodies, to our emotions, to our spiritual selves um, that, that has such profound effects? Um, and from there on, uh, got certified as a music therapist, and since then have been practicing as a music therapist in hospice care. I always wanted to be a singer from the time I was a little girl, uh, and I started performing in high school, and then I moved to New York and was performing and, um, in folk clubs, and it was going really well, and I got a really great review when I was opening for Jesse Winchester at a place called Folk City. Had a great review in the New York Times. And I just, I was way too um, unconsciously conflicted about the whole thing of letting myself pursue this, letting myself have what I really wanted. And um, I told myself at the time I was 21. At the age of 22, I told myself, I, I don't want this. I, I don't want to be a singer. Uh, I was in therapy at the time, and I thought, I, I think I'd like to be a therapist. I think it would be really interesting. I mean, that was like the, the level of depth of my understanding. And I kind of left music and for a few years, really. And it's a little more complicated than that, but decided I was going to be a therapist, went back to college, um, then went to grad school and got a doctorate in clinical psychology all the while thinking that's what I wanted. And then I, um, ironically, <laughs> I started seeing a really, really good therapist, psychologist, um, at around the time I graduated from grad school. And he helped me understand that I was actually running away from the thing I wanted. So it was never that there was a connection between the two, psychology and music. It was the way I look at it is music was what I wanted. It was in my blood. It was the thing I was passionate about. And I had to stop myself from having that. And I chose, you know, the, uh, a path that in theory maybe would have helped me understand myself better. I think a lot of people become therapists because they want to understand themselves, but it wasn't ever what I really wanted. And when I figured that out, um, that was, I was now 32 and, uh, I re when I figured it out, it was clear as day, like, oh my God, I, I don't, I, I don't want to run away anymore. I, I need to go back to music. So I did. And, um, luckily things, it was the scariest decision I ever made because I had no idea if I really would have any success. Um, although I did have a doctorate at that point, so I guess I could have fallen back on that, but I never looked back. I really never looked back once I gave up psychology. And so I think for me, I, I, I still, you know, I think psychology and sort of psych understanding psychopathology and understanding people's conflicts and their psyches is incredibly interesting. I love talking about it. I love reading about it. Um, it wasn't what I wanted to do with my life to sit in a room with people and try and figure that out with them. But I love doing it in the abstract. And, um, and uh, you know, I don't know that there's any specific relationship for me between music and that. Music is something that, I mean, they're just, I, it's like different parts of my brain. I, I really do think so. Different parts of my brain, they're not mutually exclusive, but I couldn't 
be a working psychologist and be a working singer. That was not possible. I couldn't do both. So I had to choose. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it's, it's a little, it's a convoluted story, but that's just the way it happened. I would say if I didn't have to audition, I would potentially do it. Like if someone's, if I got discovered and they're like, you're going on Broadway and you're going to be on this in this show, I'd be like, cool. Yeah, let's do it. But um, what's interesting is, you know, I've done community theater, which is lovely and lots and lots of talented people with lots of skills, but there's, you know, I've seen other people, um, even just the next level up, which is, you know, not, I don't know if it's the next level up, but let's say, let's say Northern Stage, their vocalists and their people are, are professionals, obviously. And so just, I've seen some of their rehearsals. I've seen some of their like, um, uh, new works now where they've kind of been workshopping them close closely and just seeing like people like able to harmonize like boom like they they're like oh let's change those notes around let's do this okay cool and then they just know it and I don't have that that skill I have I'm good enough and I have a good enough voice specifically just a voice to if I've practiced and they've given me the notes and I've had the time and I listen to my recording and I find all the notes I can do it but it takes a lot of work for me to do it. Um, so right now, confidence wise, so if I could be like on Broadway or in a professional show, I think the thing that would hold me back would be just knowing that my skill level isn't quite up to par with catching on. Um, th that I happen to know is a deficit for me. Um, even until recently, I was very specifically, I don't know if I was bad at it, but I was really uncomfortable with learning harmonies. It took me a really long time to learn harmonies um, to the point where I was like, please, let, please let me get a lead because, or, or like be soprano because like that's what, <laughs> that's never the harmony. Um, and, uh, but what's interesting over the last year, so last February, so about a year ago, um, a friend and I bought ukuleles and started learning how to play the ukulele. And I haven't actually played it in many, many months. But what I learned was without meaning to, suddenly I can find harmonies without trying. Like I think something about playing notes, and because I, I wasn't going ding a ding a ding, I was going chord, chord, chord. And something about that turned something on in my brain somehow, where now all of a sudden in the car, the fun part for me is if a song comes on, if I can try to harmonize in some way. I wouldn't want necessarily anyone to hear me, but suddenly it's a skill set that I have instead of going eh, and trying to figure out where it is. I'm like, nah, oh, cool. That's the harmony. And it's, it's, an, it was really fascinating to kind of discover that. Um, and to realize that I am better because that makes me feel a lot more confident um, in going into a scenario, scenario where I might have to finally sing, sing a harmony um, or a duet or a trio or whatever. Um, so it, it, it's good, it's, it's interesting. It totally was fascinating to me that I really think that's why I can do it, is having that visceral feeling of the, the, the chords and understanding what's happening when I'm moving my fingers, that this, this changes that and this changes that, and then just being able to hear it um, more specifically. Because I didn't play anything that was just, you know, I played clarinet and that's just one note at a time. And if you're playing two notes at a time, something weird has happened. Uh, but so the stringed instrument, maybe if I had learned piano, I'd be better at it. But that was always something I was impressed with. If someone could do harmonies and just like, even in, <laughs> even in happy birthday, like if all of a sudden, if you're with theater people and someone's birthday, and it's just like the most, it's actually lovely. I was gonna say cacophonous, um, harmony, but it's actually quite lovely when people get it. But I was always like, nope, I'm staying on melody. We're not even going to try on happy birthday. Even no, no one's going to hear me. Um, so yeah, so it's very, it's kind of, it's neat to be able to realize that I can improve and this thing that I thought was fascinating and really impressive when people could do it. Maybe if I keep working on it, um, I can be impressive too, <laughs> or at least impress myself. This is the land of the living This is the land that's mine She still watches over